now joined on the Voices for Victory podcast by former president of ESPN and longtime uh, V Foundation board member, George Bodenheimer. George, uh, appreciate you taking a few minutes to chat with us today. Oh, good morning, Mick. Uh, pleasure to be with you as well. Well, there's, there's a lot I want to get into uh, with you today, but uh, first off, I just wanted to ask you and, and talk a little bit about, uh, you know, longtime friend of the V Foundation. I know someone you're close with, uh, Dick Vitale. Uh, Dick is, of course, as most people I think know, going through a cancer battle of his, of his own right now. Um, you obviously had a chance to, to get to know Dick through your time together at ESPN and all the work together you've done with the V Foundation. Um, to, to start off with, because I think he's such a character that, that people have gotten to know through the years. Um, do you remember the first time that, that you met Dick? I do. I remember meeting Dick. It was in January of 1981. I had just started at ESPN. I was a driver and I was assigned to, uh, pick up Dick Vitale at the, uh, Hartford airport. And, uh, I became his regular driver that, that basketball season or that winter. And, uh, we became friends and, uh, we've been friends for over 40 years now, but, uh, that was when I first met Dick. And it's interesting because, you know, at, at that point he was just getting going with his TV career, right? He had, he had been a, a coach before and, and, and wasn't maybe as widely known the personality of Dick Vitale that I think everyone associates with him now from his, you know, 40 years on the air. Um, did you get the the vibes of the Dick Vitale that everyone knows now from when you first met him back in 1981? Well, yes, in the sense that Dick Vitale is a truly, uh, you know, unique um, person in that, uh, you know, he's obviously got this effervescent personality, passion for life, passion for basketball, passion for people. Uh, but Dick's the same person that you you know, in person that you see on the air. I mean, that is Dick Vitale. He is who he is. And that's one of the most beautiful things about him. So, uh, you know, right off the bat, uh, I think it was pretty clear that everyone knew Dick was a, 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 a unique talent, a unique talent for television. And uh, obviously his, his passion towards raising money to support pediatric cancer research through the V Foundation. Um, anyone that's met him or just seen him on TV knows, know that that, that is what he, what he lives for. Um, what is it about Dick that just had, gives him such drive to, to be so passionate about raising money? You know, it's just his passion. He's, he's, he's embraced raising money to help kids. And if you, you know, his passion is infectious. And uh, this year's gala, May 6th in uh, Sarasota, uh, I believe will be the 17th uh, Vital Gala. And I want to give as much credit to his wife, Lorraine, as Dick, because uh, she's his partner side by side in this. And it's a, it's a year round effort. And this year they will go over $50 million raised for pediatric cancer for the V foundation through the galas. And that's a big number. And, uh, but it, it doesn't just happen. It's, as I said, it's a year round effort. Uh, the passion that he has for, raising money to help kids and help people who are ill is just, it's just heartwarming. It's inspiring. It's beautiful. Uh, all those adjectives apply. It's a truly spectacular story. Well, and I know we're, we're all thinking about Dick and, and uh, hoping he gets better soon. And I know he's obviously disappointed. He has some vocal cord issues right now. Couldn't get back on the air at ESPN, which is his other passion, of course, is college basketball. And uh, we're hoping uh, yeah, to see him back on the air uh, next season. I know, I know Georgia, I'm, I'm sure you're thinking the same. Yes, we all are. And it's truly also heartwarming uh, to see the outpouring of support that he's getting uh, across the country, uh, if not around the world, from fans and people who know of Dick and respect him and love him. And the, out, the outpouring of love and respect is, is truly uh, heartwarming. So Dick is obviously one part of a large ESPN team that's been so supportive of the V Foundation from its very beginning. Um, George, you were you were a member of the ESPN team for for a long time, um, and and what do you remember about the beginnings of the V Foundation? What when did those when did when did you first first hear about these conversations that that maybe we're getting going? Well, typically. Uh... You know, the V was founded in 1993 by ES, then ESPN president uh, uh, Steve Bornstein. Uh, and obviously, not obviously, but he sat on the board of the V. And 
So when I succeeded him as president of ESPN in 1998, I joined the board. Um, and subsequently, my successors, successor John Skipper and now Jimmy Pataro, uh, uh, also serve on the board, served and serve on the board of the V Foundation. So that's sort of the trajectory of how I got involved, just by virtue of being president of the company. Um, so it was difficult for me to spend a lot of time on the V Foundation in those early years. Really, Rosa Gaddy, uh, who held a number of executive positions at ESPN, including head of communications and, and human resources, uh, also sat on the board and was really the driver of ESPN's participation in the V Foundation for all those years in the early 2000s. Uh, then we formed the V Committee and uh, a collection of, uh, of ESPN employees currently led uh, by Brent Colborn. Uh, just do a fantastic job of sort of making the V come alive, if you will, within ESPN. And it's truly uh, embodied in the culture, uh, as you well know now. And uh, it's just a wonderful thing to see so many people involved. And we talk about this anytime we talk uh, to someone associated with ESPN, just how the the support for the V, it starts at the top with, with people like you mentioned, you know, the presidents yourself, Steve Bornstein, uh, John Skipper, and now Jimmy Pataro. It starts there as them being a member of the board and participating. But it's so much, it runs so much deeper than that. You mentioned the V committee. Um, I, everyone always wants to mention Brent Colburn because Brent does such a fantastic job. We love working with Brent. He's so passionate about about the work that the V Foundation does. How did that sort of develop over the years that these, you know, they have day jobs. They have very, you know, demanding day jobs. And then on top of their day jobs, they're taking on this work to support the V Foundation. What does it say about the culture at ESPN that, uh, you know, it is it is something that people jump to, to to be a part of these committees? Well, I think, you know, I, I think it speaks very well of the culture of people of ESPN and the company itself. I uh, feel like there's, you know, it's it's important for a company to stand for something besides simply making profits, which, of course, is the job of any company. But beyond that, there's life and and assisting other people who may be less fortunate than you are. And that that spirit is alive and well within the culture of ESPN and really embodied as you say, by the support of the employees for the V Foundation, they come out of the come out of the woodworks to, on top of their day jobs, to support us, uh, support the V in creating events, uh, working around the ESPYS, uh, working with with commercial sponsors, uh, so forth and so on. I mean, none of these things happen without a tremendous amount of work behind the scenes, and the V Foundation has benefited greatly from the spirit that resides at ESPN to, to, for this cause. It's really a beautiful thing. And they've been there since day one when, when Jim Valvano announced the creation of the V Foundation in that, that SB speech that has now, you know, grown in lore over the past, you know, almost 30 years. Um, when, when he gave that speech at the first SB, George, what, what do you remember uh, about it when, when that speech happened? What, what was the first thing that kind of popped into your mind when you watched it? You know, I mean, my wife, Ann, and I were there. Uh, I, I, I mean, the, honestly, after nearly 30 years, it's, it's pretty much of a blur, uh, the evening. It was the first ESPYs. Uh, none of us really knew what was Going, what it was going to become and grow into, and certainly a very large event now. But same goes for the V Foundation. I mean, I don't, you know, I can't honestly say, you know, certainly I had any thought of or a vision of exactly what it was going to grow into sitting there listening to Jimmy give this wonderful speech that night. I've probably seen that speech, I don't know, I've probably seen that speech thousands of times uh, with all the work on the V over the years and the events. Uh, it's just like the greatest 10 minute speech ever. I mean, it's got it all, uh, humor, uh, seriousness, uh, passion. Uh, it was as if Jim, you know, the cancer left his body for 10 or 11 minutes to give that speech. Uh, it was just a beautiful thing to, to see. And I'm, I'm so happy I got a chance to see it live. And, uh, you know, it was, it's, it, it's really, it's really quite remarkable. 
Well, in the speech, right, he talks about what makes a heck of a day. You laugh, you think, and you cry. He did all that in the speech, right, let alone a full day. He had the 12 minutes or whatever in that speech. He knocked all three of those out in, in the speech. Well, if you look at the video of the speech and you see the shots of the audience, you can certainly see people were very moved and emotional with uh, his his speech. I mean, he, he really delivered a first-class speech, and uh, it, it moved the audience. I certainly recall that. And it's been it's been moving people and inspiring people for almost 30 years since then. I know uh, on this podcast, we talked to a lot of cancer survivors or cancer patients, people who've dealt with that. And people watch that speech for a motive, you know, the don't give up, don't ever give up. That's a motivating factor to this day, 30 years later. And that that really says something about about how important that speech was. I get emails on a regular basis from people who use don't give up, don't ever give up as a as a line at the end of their you know, at the end of their emails, I mean, it's, it's such a motivator for a lot of people. It's it's succinct and powerful. And George, you mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, you've been part of the uh, board since uh, you became president of ESPN back in 1998. Uh, and the V Foundation has obviously changed a lot uh, in that time. Um, what are some of the, the biggest changes from when you first got on the board uh, to where the organization is now? Well, I mean, the sheer growth uh, of our fundraising efforts, um, and our grant making are just the two, you know, tent pole, you know, growth statistics, if you will. I mean, we're raising, you know, upwards of 30, 35 million dollars a year now. Uh, the grant making uh, is, you know, second to none under our world class scientific review board. Uh, our organization is growing, as you know, uh, our staff in Cary is growing. Uh, we have a very bold strategic plan we're putting on in place with our new CEO. He's not new anymore. It's a year now. Uh, Shane Jacobson doing a fantastic job. So we got a, I mean, the, the V Foundation of 2022, uh, in many respects, is, is so much beyond where we were when we first started um, that it, it's, it's very, very heartening because the, the, organization is really on a on a rocket ship and growing and we're 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 very motivated as an organization as a board to continue to increase the impact of what we're doing and and fund more world-class research and save more lives I mean we're very focused on that and that's that's really what drives it and uh, I feel very good about that and one of the things I, I constantly hear from people who who work with the V foundation is that one of the most important factors for them as to why they gave or why they wanted to be a part of the organization was the pledge of that 100% of direct donations goes to research and programs. And I know that's been something that the V Foundation has had since the beginning. Um, what do you think it is, you know, and we're so lucky to have an endowment that allows us to do that. Um, what do you think it is about that that just is so motivating for people as a, as a reason to give? I mean, it's really a signature it's a signature piece of what we do. I mean, it's, it's how does it get any more simple and straightforward than to look at a donor who has plenty of options of where to put his or her philanthropic dollars and say, you know, if you give us a dollar, a dollar is going to world-class doctors to conduct world-class research. I mean, how does it get any more straightforward than that? There's no you know, monkey business or shenanigans. Uh, we run a lean and mean operation. Uh, I really think a lot of that has to do with the ESPN culture having started the V Foundation. I mean, we run lean. We 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 work hard on that, and we want the money to go to the go to the doctors for research. So, I just think it's it's such a powerful aspect of what we do. Uh, the hundred percent commitment is 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 really a. a, a a flagship part of the V Foundation, and it's a it's a powerful motivator for gifts. I mean, we get gifts of all sizes, from five dollars to multi million dollars, and everywhere in between. But it all goes through that same funnel of a hundred percent of that's going to the doctors due to that endowment, which is over forty million dollars today and, and growing. So that enables us to continue to keep that 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 alive, the hundred percent pledge. And, and you mentioned the, the you know, when you're talking to donors about about why the V Foundation is a is a great place to give, um, the hundred percent obviously plays a big role in that. But what's 
what sort of you, you are such you've done such an amazing job sort of being a part of some of the fundraising that the V Foundation has done. I know you were kind of the chair of our, our Not a Moment to Lose campaign that was a fundraising effort for us a, a few years back. Um, when you're making that pitch to a, a potential donor about the V Foundation, what what's sort of your elevator pitch? What's like the, okay, this is why the V Foundation is the organization for you? I think it all starts with our scientific review board and uh, under the, the, the former leadership of Dr. Bob Bast and Joe Moore, and now under Dr. Bill Nelson um, at Johns Hopkins. I mean, we have a world-class scientific review board that picks the best research projects from the finest cancer uh, centers in the United States of America. And, you know, for me, on the fundraising side, that's the strongest and easiest part of, of our pitch. Like, this money is going to be is going to be guided by the top doctors in the United States, the top cancer centers in the country. And if you wish to make a difference with your philanthropic dollar, you can't find a better organization than the V Foundation than to make that investment. And to the point we were just talking about a minute ago, 100% of what you give us is going to those doctors. So it's, you know, from a fundraiser or a fundraising aspect for our board members and our staff and our development staff, I mean, that's a pretty strong pitch. Of course, as we all know, unfortunately, virtually every family in the United States has been impacted in some way by cancer. So between its prevalence and the fact that the V Foundation is a good steward of the dollars, uh, you know, that's, I think, the, really the, the backbone of our fundraising efforts. Yeah, and I think, you know, in talking to people on this podcast who've been affected by cancer and the, the, well, first of all, the, the fact that they know that the, re, the, the money's going to the best of the best. You mentioned the, the scientific board we have here, and it, it is the top names in, in science that are on at part of this board, some of the biggest names in cancer research. And we've had some of them on the podcast. We had Dr. Nelson on the podcast. Um, you know, the fact that they know these are the best of the best, right? I think also something that's that's always interesting to me is the V Scholar program is such a innovative way of thinking about this, where we're getting young researchers going and they may get a grant from the V Foundation early on in their career, but then they're getting millions and millions and millions of dollars in further research to continue their research from other organizations or, or federal funding because the V Foundation got them started. Yes. I mean, two things there. One, I mean, that was Jimmy's vision and certainly it has its roots in him he being a basketball coach and dealing with young people, but he wanted to support young researchers at the beginning of their career. Uh, those with the most potential, those putting together the best possible proposals for research. So that's number one. That's, and that's something that we stay very true to in our granting of our, our funds uh, to the young scholars. And number two, as you just pointed out, the multiplier effect of, the V Foundation giving a grant to a young researcher and what they can then turn that into with other grants from the government and private sources, the multiplier effect is huge. And it really helps, you know, it's like adding rocket fuel to the careers of these young scientists. So it's very uh, gratifying. And uh, my gosh, to hear those V scholars speak and we bring them to events all the time. Uh, we just had, uh, some events in New York City in December uh, to hear what is being done with the dollars. It's so inspirational to hear these doctors speak of their work. Um, it's truly, it's humbling and inspirational and and motivational. Yeah, and, and you didn't mention her name, uh, George, but good teaser, Dr. McDonald, who was at the Stuart Scott event in New York City, uh, is going to be on the podcast in an upcoming episode. So oh, nice, great. nice, nice teaser there that you didn't even know you were doing. Well, she's that'll, fantastic. Be, that'll, that'll be a podcast, uh, certainly worth tuning into because she's extremely impressive. And she had the audience that evening, uh, captivated with a uh, description of her work. No question. Um, you know, you've, you've been with the V foundation now for almost, almost 25 years. So th this may be a tough question to answer because it's been such a long time, but is there, Maybe one moment or one event or one thing that you've been a part of since your time here that you're most proud of or it's most memorable for you. What is it for you that really stands out from your time uh, as part of the V? Well, that's a really hard question. Uh, there's been so many great 
memories and things over these past 25 years. Uh, but I would say the people uh, of the V Foundation itself, uh, just a wonderful board, uh, the events that we have had uh, with the wine celebration uh, founded by Julie Allegro, Maples out in California has obviously been a highlight. I've met so many great people out West uh, through that event. Dick's event, obviously in Sarasota has been a highlight. Um, our efforts in New York, which have an ongoing and are growing the Virginia vine event. I mean, it's just to see the effort that goes into creating these events, uh, the people's passion, the board members passion, uh, to see, frankly, some of the patients and people who have benefited from cancer research is just humbling and inspirational. Uh, and, it, and, you know, it, it feels like we're accomplishing something, you know, helping people. And, uh, you know, as Jimmy said, you know, the life you save may be somebody you love. I mean, I, I, I think of that all the time and it's a, it's a motivator. So uh, hard to answer your question. It's just been, it's why I'm so involved 25 years later. I love it. And, uh, it's a great organization and I'm proud to be a small part of it. Well, more than a small part of it, George. I know we're, we're, we're lucky to have you as part of the team. Um, I'll, I'll, last question for you. I'll get you out of here on this. Um, what would victory over cancer look like to you? Putting us out of business. You know, uh, we talk about that all the time. We're not looking to set up an organization that lasts in perpetuity. We are working on an organization to put ourselves out of business. And uh, a world free of cancer would be uh, a wonderful world to live in. And that's, uh, that's something our, our former CEO, Susan Braun, always used to say, right, is we'll find something else to do. <laughs> when we get there, we'll find something to do. Susan's a smart woman. <laughs> Well, George, uh, thank you so much for, for stopping by and chatting with us today. Again, we are, uh, we're so lucky to have you still, uh, after all these years, so involved with the V Foundation and everything we have going on. So thank you for that, and thank you for, for dropping by and chatting with us today. Oh, great to be with you, Mick. Keep up the great work on these podcasts. Really, uh, really enjoying them. Have a great day. Thanks, George.